So now to understand the major root values for the nerves which are uh, present in the lower limb barring the sciatic, let's talk about the lumbar plexus. Just like we talked about the brachial plexus in the upper limb, here we have the major plexus as a lumbar plexus. Although there are two plexus which are contributing to the nerves of the lower limb, one is lumbar and one is the sacral plexus, but we'll talk about the sacral plexus a little later. So in the lumbar plexus, guys, it is found by the all the lumbar nerves that is L1, L2, L3, L4 and L5. So overall the lumbar plexus is having contribution from all the lumbar nerves. Let me just explain this in a schematic way and then I'll show you some pictures to kind of correlate with the how it, it looks like in actual. The nerve that you see coming from L2, L3 and L4. See, this is a nerve which I'm talking about coming from L2, L3 and L4. And there's another nerve which is again coming from L2, L3, L4 which I'm going to draw like this. Let's say this is L2, this is L3, and L4. Let's go with these first guys. The nerve that I'm, I drew here, the root value for both the nerves is L2, L3, L4. The one which I drew more laterally here, this here is the femoral nerve. And this one here is the obturator nerve. So you're looking at the two very important nerves of the thigh. One is the nerve for the anterior compartment, the femoral nerve, and one is the obturator nerve. Now, the point is that what is the point of having the two different nerves when they have the same root value here? Well, they, though they have a same root value, but the divisions are different. Now, there is no doubt about that, whether it is femoral nerve or obturator nerve, both are formed by the ventral primary rami. Like brachial plexus was also by the ventral primary rami. This is also ventral primary rami. This is also ventral primary rami. But then ventral primary rami, the nerves which comes out ventrally, they again divide into the ventral branches and dorsal branches. What I'm saying is from the spinal cord, the nerve comes out and it divides into two. One is a ventral primary rami and dorsal primary rami. Dorsal primary rami is mainly to take care of the, the back muscle, the extensor muscles. Ventral primary rami is mainly supplying the muscles of the anterior compartment or muscles of the abdomen, muscles of the upper limb, lower limb. So ventral primary rami further is having branches some branches are dorsal and some are ventral that is the difference here so femoral nerve is found by the it is by the please note it is by the dorsal division of ventral primary rami i'm writing vpr dorsal division of ventral primary rami of what of l2 l3 and l4 Whereas obturator nerve is formed by the ventral division of again ventral primary rami of L2, L3 and L4. So both are L2, L3, L4, both are by the ventral primary rami, but the divisions are different. That is a dorsal division and that is a ventral division, which might confuse few of you that okay, you will say, okay, our femoral nerve is supplying the anterior compartment of thigh. And obturator nerve is supplying the medial compartment. Then how come the nerve supplying the anterior compartment is by the dorsal division? When the answer is in the embryology. Developmentally, the ventral division, the, the ventral compartment or the anterior compartment was not anteriorly. You all know that upper limb, the, in the development of upper limb, upper limb rotates outwards like this. But the lower limb rotates inwards, internally rotates. That's why this femoral compartment or the anterior compartment of thigh, this originally was not anteriorly. It was more posteriorly. Later on by the rotation, it came in front. But the division of the nerve will not change. Na? So division stays the same. So it is a dorsal division of ventral primary rami. Although the nerve is supplying what compartment? Anterior compartment. Because originally, developmentally, this compartment was not anterior. It later on came anterior with the rotation. So these are two important nerves, femoral nerve and obturator nerve, both L2, L3, L4. Okay. Now, apart from obturator nerve, you may have another nerve called as an accessory obturator nerve. That accessory obturator nerve is coming from the L2 and L3. Like again, not always present, but that is like coming from L2 and L3 and that nerve is called as an accessory obturator nerve. I'm not drawing it here. Let's not uh, create unnecessary confusion. From L4 and L5, from L4 and L5, there's a trunk comes out that is called as a lumbosacral trunk. Well, the reason we call it lumbosacral trunk because this is a contribution from the lumbar region and below we have a sacral plexus. So this will go and join with that. 
the sacral nerves and the trunk is called as a lumbosacral trunk here this is the one which will you will see when we talk about the sacral plexus and the sciatic nerve we call it lumbosacral trunk apart from these some other important nerves that you will see in the upper part like you will see a nerve we saw that nerve femoral nerve is from l2 l3 l4 now you will also see a nerve coming from only l2 and l3 guys i'm using a different color here just so that there is no confusion a nerve that you see coming from l2 and l3 and that will be running also downward toward the thigh only this nerve is called as the lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh this is the lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh root value i don't have to tell you you can see it is coming from where l2 and l3 lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh it is coming from l2 and l3 now please understand anterior compartment of thigh when you look at the anterior compartment of thigh it is supplied by three cutaneous nerves one is the medial cutaneous nerve one is a lateral cutaneous nerve and one is an intermediate cutaneous nerve so we have medial intermediate and lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh medial and intermediate cutaneous nerve of thigh are the direct branches from the femoral nerve so when you see this femoral nerve going to the anterior compartment you will see it is giving off those nerves called as intermediate cutaneous nerve of thigh and medial cutaneous nerve of thigh which we will discuss next only the lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh is directly coming from lumbar plexus so out of the three cutaneous nerve supplying the anterior compartment of thigh only lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh is coming directly from the lumbar plexus and make sense also that's why it is more lateral to the femoral nerve because ultimately it has to supply the skin of the lateral side of the thigh then what you'll see there's a nerve again i'm using a different color here guys the nerve that is coming from l1 and then you'll see that further divides into two into the ilio hypogastric and ilio inguinal nerve so we got a ilio hypogastric ilio hypogastric nerve and ilio inguinal nerve needless to say their root value is l1 in both the cases ilio hypogastric and ilio inguinal nerve they both root value is l1 they can have a t12 also contributing to them sometime t12 nerve will also contribute to both these nerves but generally it is the l1 which is a root value for the ilio hypogastric and ilio inguinal another important nerve again a different color i'm using coming from l1 and l2 look at this nerve guys coming from l1 and l2 and this nerve is the genito femoral nerve again very very clinically very important nerve that you should know about coming from l1 and l2 that is the genito femoral nerve the, the nerve is having two names in it like genito and femoral and that's what the nerve will do in the further course this genito femoral nerve it divides into two branches one is the genital branch and one is the femoral branch so we have a two branches of genito femoral nerve one will be the genital branch of genito femoral and one will be the femoral branch of genito femoral we will talk a little more about it in a while so these are the major root values that you should know about the nerves which are coming out of the lumbar plexus this lumbar plexus will be of immense help to us in the abdomen also when we will discuss the relations of the kidney like this ilio hypogastric ilio inguinal nerve genito femoral nerve lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh now all you know all these nerves that you see in the upper part here they are also forming the posterior relation of kidney kidney is present in the lumbar region only and these nerves are also coming from lumbar region so when you talk about the posterior relations of kidney again these nerves will come handy so as of now please remember that ilio hypogastric ilio inguinal is coming from l1 genito femoral is from l1 l2 l2 l3 l4 is both for femoral and obturator lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh another clinically important nerve that you should know coming from l2 and l3 supplying the skin on the lateral side of the thigh and lumbosacral trunk is from l4 and l5 let me tell you one uh, question which was asked in the exam a few years back l4 this l4 root is also called as the nervous it is also called as a nervous furcalis we call it nervous furcalis it furcates this nervous furcalis and it is contributing to so many nerves you can see the nervous furcalis is in the lumbosacral trunk it is in the accessory obturator nerve it is in the obturator nerve it is in the femoral nerve so that nervous furcalis is is a uh, name given to the l4 l4 root or l4 nerve is also called as a nervous furcalis to make you understand this thing even better let me show you two images here one without muscle so that you can just see the nerves how they are placed in the in the lumbar region and then i'll show you another picture of the opposite side so that you have a practice of seeing the picture of both the sides 
with the muscles and the nerve together so you have a better orientation before you go to the compartmental anatomy so here we go guys that is the first image i want to show you and look at how these nerves are coming out it's exactly the same orientation that we drew you can see the lumbar vertebrae is present in there and all these lumbar nerves are coming out so i'm let let me go in a sequence the way we followed in there now this nerve here is coming from the l1 i'll keep drawing and uh, just rubbing it off guys this nerve is coming from l1 and then you can see it is dividing here in the two branches so we have a ilio inguinal and ilio hypogastric nerves you can see this ilio inguinal nerve is coming all the way downward into the inguinal canal also let's not talk about this so this is the l1 nerve which is coming out giving off ilio hypogastric and ilio inguinal then if you look at l1 and l2 there we go this l1 and this is l2 here what we said what nerve is that that is a genito femoral nerve just look at this this nerve here is a genito femoral nerve which is dividing into two branches as i already mentioned one of them this genito femoral nerve will be divided into two one will be what one will be the the femoral branch of genito femoral nerve and one will be the genital branch of genito femoral nerve femoral branch of genito femoral nerve is supplying the skin on femoral triangle we will talk about this in the femoral triangle only and genital branch of genito femoral nerve supplies the cremastric muscle we know about the cremastric muscle in the in the spermatic cord and the scrotum that cremastric muscle is supplied by the genital branch of genito femoral nerve let me rub this off so there is no confusion to tell you the next look at the major nerves guys we talked about uh, let me just use a different color again this nerve which is coming from l2 this one is l3 and there we have l4 and here we go what now is that the thick nerve over there is the femoral nerve look at the red one here that's a femoral nerve i hope you can appreciate that and with that only let me also tell you another nerve coming from l2 l3 and c from l4 this nerve which is relatively thinner more toward the medial side it's going to be the obturator nerve both are coming from l2 l3 l4 coming from the l2 l3 and l4 we got a femoral nerve and obturator nerve you already know this one is what there is a dorsal division and this one is a ventral division of the same ventral primary rami of l2 l3 l4 talking about the femoral nerve we also need to look at the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh look at this guys i'm going to use the same red color which i use for the femoral nerve coming from the same l2 and l3 if you can trace that and look at this nerve here going toward the lateral side deep to the inguinal ligament that is the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh lateral femoral cutaneous nerve or lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh you can call it all right so this and and lumbosacral trunk is not shown on this side lumbosacral trunk is represented on this side you can see the lumbosacral trunk coming from this l4 is there and l5 is there and you can see it is going below and is joining with this sacral region here the sacral plexus over there so that over there is a lumbosacral trunk coming from where l4 and l5 so that is a story of both the the lumbar plexus the major nerves coming out from there l1 is giving off ilio hypogastric ilio inguinal l1 and l2 both are giving off the lat, uh, genito femoral nerve l2 l3 lateral cutaneous nerve thigh l2 l3 l4 femoral and obturator nerve l3 l4 accessory obturator nerve which we are not talking about here and then you can see the lumbosacral trunk from the l4 and l5 now just to have a better orientation and so that you can also use your brain to apply it on the other side also i'm going to flip this picture i mean uh, let us talk about the lumbar plexus of this side but with the muscles also and i want you to focus only on two muscles in that region one is the swass and one is iliacus so let me put another picture here and let's try to get oriented even better so we have already discussed these nerves on this side here guys completely let's let's ignore it and i wanted to focus on this side so let me just shift the diagram and here we go so what do you see again you can see the lumbar vertebrae over there and you can see some muscles present here in the lumbar uh, uh, lumbosacral region as well as from the iliac region now look at this muscle which i highlighted in yellow here that is a swass major and that muscle which is overlapping the swass major is swass minor swass minor may or may not be present not always seen but swass major is obviously there so it's a swass major and swass minor muscle in the yellow highlighter there and in the green highlighter there this muscle is a iliacus muscle coming from the iliac fossa so when you see the swass major muscle and iliacus muscle when they go downward deep to this inguinal ligament they are obviously going into the anterior compartment of the thigh we know that both swass major muscle and iliacus muscle are the flexors of the hip joint so obviously they are present anteriorly to the hip joint here so you can see they are going anteriorly to the hip joint here 
you need to identify those nerves in relation to these muscles especially for the lower limb discussion what about the other nerves above how will you identify them we will discuss that in the lumbar region only in the abdomen but now right now my focus is that the muscle here is what we said this muscle is the swass major and here we have the iliacus and then they have a common tendon when they go downward for the insertion toward the lesser trochanter that is called as a iliosuas tendon the femoral nerve that that we discussed the two important nerves supplying the thigh the femoral nerve and obturator nerve guys femoral nerve will be seen emerging lateral to the suas major so if you are looking for a femoral nerve in a cadaveric section or something then look for the femoral nerve between the suas major and iliacus and you can see in there can you see that nerve over there this nerve is the femoral nerve and you can see emerging between the suas major and iliacus whereas obturator nerve will be seen medial to the suas major and you can see that you, you, obviously that nerve is not shown here but the nerve will be coming medial to the suas major and can you see that nerve coming to the obturator foramen that nerve here is the obturator nerve so in simple word nerve lateral to suas major is femoral nerve medial to the suas major the obturator nerve that's how the two major nerves supplying the muscles of the thigh region are entering into the thigh by going lateral and medial to the suas major muscle the nerve that you see is piercing suas major look at this can you see that nerve that is piercing the suas major muscle this is the genito femoral nerve we discuss the nerve coming from l1 and l2 that genito femoral nerve that's how it comes out by piercing the the suas major muscle and can you see it is dividing into two branches needless to tell you the two branches one is going to be the genital branch and one is going to be the femoral branch of genito femoral nerve and lastly one more i'm only focusing on the nerves which are coming into the thigh region let's forget about the other nerve the ilio hypogastric and all and look at this nerve coming from l2 and l3 and then arching laterally into the iliac fossa look at this that's arching laterally into the iliac fossa running on the suas major muscle and then passing deep to the inguinal ligament that was the lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh that is a lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh so guys for the discussion on the lower limb i wanted to understand that where the genito femoral nerve is it is piercing suas major muscle that's how you identify it muscle lat uh, nerve lateral to the suas major will be the femoral nerve nerve medial to the suas major is going to be the obturator nerve and the one that you see which is arching more laterally within the iliac fossa on the iliacus muscle in its fascia that is a lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh so obviously knowing the suas major muscle having a, a pictorial orientation of suas major muscle is very important if you want to understand how exactly nerves are entering into the thigh from the pelvic region and the lumbar region here so, so this is about the lumbar plexus and its branches